All right, good morning. Thanks for being here. My name is Lance Hiltz. I'm the Communication Services Officer for Horizon School Division. And I'm going to be introducing the Horizon School Division Director of Education, Mr. Kevin Geringer, who is going to share a statement on behalf of the division. Mr. Geringer. Good morning, everyone. I want to begin by stating that, uh, um, of course, this is an uh, extremely tragic ordeal for our students and staff and families um, across our school division. And uh, we, as a school division, uh, in partnership uh, with Greater Saskatoon Catholic School Division, are reaching out to ensure that we are doing everything we can to support our students, our families, and our community. Any resources that, uh, that we have available in Horizon School Division and the resources available uh, to us through our partner organizations, such as the Ministry of Education, is being utilized to support the needs of our students, our families, and our staff at this time. We know that this is a far-reaching community tragedy, and it has directly impacted so many in our region. In Humboldt, a joint decision was made between Horizon School Division and Greater Saskatoon Catholic Schools to cancel school for our students on Monday, April 9th. Horizon School, Di school Division schools affected by this cancellation were Humboldt Public School and Humboldt Collegiate Institute. Humboldt Collegiate Institute has a unique governance structure as the school is jointly operated by both Horizon School Division and Greater Saskatoon Catholic Schools. The supports that we have in place for our schools have been co a coordinated effort between these two school divisions. I will leave it to Mr. Greg Chatlin, the Director of Education for Greater Saskatoon Catholic Schools, to speak to the faith-based components of this support. The counseling supports we have had in place for each of Horizon's 41 schools have been co coordinated through um, and among Horizon's administrators, our traumatic events response team, our counseling staff, Saskatchewan Health, the Saskatoon Fire Department, Partners Family Services, and supports from other school divisions in the province, including and coordinated by our Deputy Minister of Education, Mr. Rob Curry, who's been a big support that way. We've also benefited very much from the counsel and partnership of trauma expert Kevin Cameron, and from, who is from the uh, Canadian, he's the executive director from the Canadian Centre for Threat Assessment and Trauma Response. Although Humboldt students were not in our classrooms on Monday, our counseling supports were available to our students and our families in an off site location yesterday. For our Humboldt schools, Monday was a day for our staff to receive direct support from trauma experts and have adequate time to prepare for the return of our students today. In Horizon School Division's 39 other schools and 32 other communities outside of Humboldt, classes resumed as normal on Monday morning. Teams of counselors and other supports continue to be provided to students and staff in these communities on an as needed basis. While this community tragedy has directly impacted and directly affected the city of Humboldt, um, we are a tight-knit school division, and we're a uh, region and province for that matter, and we recognize that this is certainly a provincial, a national, and even a global traumatic event. Families and, and individuals affected by this trauma have connections to communities across our school division. It has been critical for us to recognize where the needs for counseling and other services um, are most significant. That work was mobilized and our teams began their preparations as early as last Friday evening. We have ensured that counseling supports are available from our internal counselors and from our partners and other organizations for all Horizon students, staff and families. Many of those involved in this incident had deep connections 
to a number of our local communities. They were family members or great friends of our students. They were students, even billets, of our staff. Some young men are and were current Horizon uh, students themselves attending HCI. Others had been Horizon students in the past. These athletes are and were heroes to many, and in them, our students see shining examples of the young adults and athletes they're dreaming of growing up to be. In the days to come, our students will require a great deal of support and love to cope with this loss. As trusted adults and educators in these children's lives, our school division has a responsibility, a great responsibility, to ensure that we provide the support that our students, our staff, and our families need, even when we're hurting ourselves. We remind our students and families that further supports can be arranged if they are needed. We remind our staff of the same. I will close by strongly encouraging our students and staff to take advantage of the counseling supports available in this unthinkable time. And I would also close by indicating that the families uh, are requiring that their privacy be maintained as we continue to deal with this and they deal with this very tragic ordeal. The biggest reminder I want to, to share is that none of us are alone. Thank you. I will now ask uh, Director of Education for Greater Saskatoon Catholic Schools, Mr. Greg Chatlin, to share a statement on behalf of his organization. Well, thank you, Lance. Uh, welcome to everyone here. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, Director Geringer covered a lot of the territory already uh, with respect to how school division and schools in particular respond in situations like this. So I'll try not to repeat too much of what, uh, what he shared. Uh, before I do comment on the specifics of the support we have in place, I did want to take the opportunity to add my voice and that, uh, that uh, of my entire school division to the chorus of condolences to the families of those we have lost and the prayers for those who are recovering. Like everyone else, our hearts sank and we all got a lump in our throats when we heard the tragic news Friday evening. As the details uh, were more revealed, that lump turned into a heaviness which turned into darkness. As my father always taught me, he said, in dark times, the only way out is straight ahead. But in the darkness, where is forward? It's easy to be disoriented. And that's what we've been doing over the past few days, orienting ourselves, finding that point of light that way out of the darkness so that we are ready to help others find their point of light, find their way out of the darkness and the, the feelings that they are experiencing. As Director Geringer mentioned, we know that this is a far-reaching tragedy and that there are un un unanticipated needs throughout the 50 of our schools that will arise. But this here in Humboldt is, of course, the epicenter. Humboldt is where we have the most acute need and so this is where we have been focusing our efforts over the past few days. We have an amazing staff of committed professionals, but the response to a tragedy of this scale cannot be done in isolation. And as Director Geringer mentioned, we've been working closely with Horizon School Division, with the Ministry of Education, with the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Social Services, coordinating our resources and our supports. All of these branches and all of the folks that we've been in contact with have shared one common mantra, whatever you need. Even the Premier, when he called me on Saturday, said, Greg, whatever you need. And that has been echoed again and again with everyone that we've come in contact with. So we met on Saturday and on Sunday and on Monday to make sure that we have our plans in place to support our staff for whatever they need. We are leaning on each other and sharing our own light because we need to be ready for the others to lean on us and to help them find their path out of the darkness. 
Our tragic events response team has been here in Humboldt for, for a number of days, as I mentioned. This uh, team consists of a number of uh, roles and various training that they have in the background that reflect the needs in a school over the period of this time. As Director Geringer mentioned, a number of extra counselors and other supports have been brought into town uh, to support. While math and science are important, our main curriculum at these times is a curriculum of care. It's a balance of time that we attend to. There's a calmness and a familiarity of routine and schedule at school. There are times when our children and youth just want to do math. However, there is also time to deal with the challenges that we are facing, that we are living with, and to deal with them in a proactive and a supportive manner. <clears throat> so we find that balance of time right now. And this balance varies with age. Of course, as we support our youngest learners in kindergarten through to our grade 12 students, they deal with things very differently, and so must our response be different. We haven't determined how long these supports will need to be here. We will continue to consult with our school staff, with our partners in the other ministries to reevaluate our needs as time move, moves forward. But I do anticipate that we will need to be present for quite some time. We recognize that the gravity of the wounds varies from student to student. Some have lost a local hero. Some have lost a classmate, a friend, a neighbor. While closer still, some have lost a brother, a son, or a father. Wounds will heal, though. And we hope the support we're able to offer gives the tools and the time necessary to help that healing take place. As a Catholic school division, we have a unique opportunity for another level of support, that of spiritual and pastoral support. And being the season of Easter, the meaning of the resurrection and overcoming death is even more poignant for us at this time. Listening to the prayers at the vigil Saturday, uh, Sunday night, to the raw emotional prayers of the team chaplain, Sean Brando, it made me realize how fortunate we are to have faith in times like this. How fortunate we are to have a reason to hope, even when the darkness seems to surround us. How fortunate we are to have our schools, our staff, our parishioners, and throughout our diocese, and Bishop Mark and even Pope Francis join together in praying for this community and praying for each other. We are all part of this community and we share in the grief and the sorrow. And we hope that we can also offer some of the guidance that helps to lead us from the darkness into the light. We look forward with hope to the recovery of those still in hospital. One last thing, I know it's been said over and over, but I don't think it can be said too many times. A huge thank you to the first responders, to the emergency crews, to the hospital and healthcare staff, and all who supported in visible and invisible ways. Your service has been exemplary and a beacon of hope in these dark times. As I close, I personally also want to thank my staff here in Humboldt and my members of our Tragic Events Response Team. These are wonderful professionals dedicated to our children and youth. And in e these tough times, their strength and faith shines through. And I am honored and blessed to serve with them. Uh, we would now open up the floor to any questions you have for either director. Please just start by stating your name, your organization, and who you're directing your question to. Yes. Uh, Christy Blatchford from the National Post. I guess it's for, well, I guess it's for both of you. How many uh, Broncos or former Broncos are or were students? Um, yes, the, the number of... Uh, um, Bronco uh, staff and, and uh, athletes who were students here at HCI uh, attended this year uh, were five and um, in the past of the current Broncos who uh, ex are, were on the team there were three who had attended in the past. Um, they'll be beginning actually today in some regards, uh, so they will begin to resume some of the semblance of, of the normal schedule. 
although there will be time uh, taken for different aspects of, of togetherness and community and also dealing uh, with some of the grief and the, uh, uh, the counseling available for them. So it'll be a bit of a, uh, a balance for the next period of time here and you know, before too long we'll resume pretty regular schedule. We, um, we were, of course, inside the high school this morning and, and um, our staff is, they're amazing, as, as Greg has mentioned, our staff are, are wonderful people and we've got tremendous supports in place and our, our students have been taken to their classes and they're, they're with uh, the people that love them and care about them and um, at this point uh, we know that there will be different reactions by our students and, and we're prepared to support them in any way possible. So yesterday uh, we had Kevin Cameron uh, involved, um, other members of, of the of a of a crisis response team to work with our, our staff, um, prepare them for the opportunities, of course, that, that they needed to be prepared for, which is meeting the needs of our children. So, um, and, and that work that happens is, is work in relationship and talking and working through their own emotions and those kinds of things, of course, which are, are obviously very, um, I mean, our staff is going through a lot, obviously, as well. I mean, these, these were our, our kids, and uh, this, was our, these, this is our community. And so working through all those pieces together is really such a critical part of this, and that's why having our students now, having our staff prepared that way for today was a very important day. I'm grateful for the work that we do together to make a decision to, to, to first of all, meet the needs of our staff so ultimately they can meet the needs of our children. I can't tell you what's happening with every family because that'll be a family decision, obviously. But, but I can tell you that um, the impact is across this entire um, city. Uh, it's in other areas, of course, as, it, as was mentioned, across our school division and um, across our province. And ultimately, what uh, what I would also mention is that um, um, the, these athletes students and otherwise they they went to our schools and they were reading with our children and they were doing those kinds of things they they were supporting in that way so not only were they billet brothers to um, a number of our children in the city but they were also engaged and involved with so many of our our families um, in different ways as well and our children in different ways so uh, we were very uh, fortunate um, to have those opportunities and of course um, you know, we, we need to be prepared to support every, every family and every child who's, who's, um, who has needs that relate to um, the grief that this entire community and province and country are feeling. So again, it's a, um, we recognize that um, in, in other communities that uh, there's um, major impacts being felt and we're responding um, on an as-needed ne as basis. So um, yesterday as, as our staffs came together and, and we worked with our, our students and families, we found where the needs might exist and, and they're in great hands. These, our staff are, are uh, incredible professionals um, and they're they recognized and were, were aware of the trauma uh, that is existing within our, our communities and they were prepared to respond and then as needed bring in the other professional resources in those communities.
children? I, I do have children. What did you tell them this morning? Uh, my, my children are older. They're gone. They, they don't live in this community. Um, so I, I but. Um, we were in the village probably this morning and the two kids didn't want to go to school. They were probably not mm -hmm. ready. They, they thought talking about it too much is just hurting more. Mm -hmm. They thought it was just too much to go back to school. They did go back. Their, their parents told them it's, you have to go back to normal, but they just didn't feel like it was the time to go back. What do you tell those kids? What were you attempting? Yeah. Um, again, the, uh, I mean, our, our parents do amazing things with their kids, and, and they, they probably talked about the fact that you have teachers who love you and care for you and support staff who, who are there to care for you. And realizing, of course, because we communicated this, that there were um, major supports in place at the school to help them with their needs that way. So I think that is the biggest thing, is that um, to, for parents to continue to communicate, and, and we communicated with our parents that way, made sure they were aware of, of what was happening, those kinds of things, so that when our children came back, they knew that their supports there, not only through the, the people who love them and their teachers and support staff, but also the other professionals who were in the community to help support. Why is it important to go back to school? Oh, I, yeah, I, I would just start by saying, I think that uh, getting back to uh, normal, a, a new normal, is something very critical for, for our children and, and our families and for all of us. But that's gonna take time and everybody's gonna deal with that in a different way. And so um, I think that's the, that's the message I would say, and I turned over to Greg. I think maybe just to pick up on a couple of points there, um, each family deals with these things in a different way. Uh, also, each family and each child has had a different uh, experience in their past. Some may have already experienced other traumatic events, and therefore, as they uh, go through this as a family, what they feel they need uh, in terms of supports, time, how they approach things is really located and, and really needs to be um, guided by, by the family. Uh, so our work is to try to be there to provide a various, uh, various pathways for these children to make their way back. Uh, some will be, uh, you know, part-time. Some will be, uh, you know, I'm ready to go. I need to be back with my community and with my friends. And some will be a few days yet before they're ready to make that step. And so we just uh, wanted to create an environment where um, whatever is needed uh, from the family standpoint, we're ready to provide. Uh, a question was asked about this morning in the, in the high school and how, what was the mood like and such. Um, you know, you bring a, a few hundred uh, youth together, um, they're, they're happy to be together. Uh, they want to be together. Um, they begin to, to deal with this together. And so the mood was sad and somber for sure, uh, but you could tell uh, the students wanted to be together. And so uh, um, that's just the, the first step in many steps in this journey. I'm, I, uh, our, our focus, I'm doing fine, and our focus is really on our, on our families, our kids, and uh, um, our staff, and ensuring that they are, they are uh, supported. And uh, our priority, the, the wonderful thing about what we do in education is that we gain strength from other people, and we gain strength from our kids. And so that's the wonderful opportunity that I have, is I get to gain strength from, from, our, from our students, from our staff, and, um, and that's, I, I rely on that strength from them to be able to continue to do the work that I need to do as the Director of Education. Can I have to ask just your thoughts yesterday when you talked about Brother Smith and makeup? I would repeat what, um, what was indicated in the press, and that is that this is a, a personal, private matter that um, really I have, no <clears throat> I have no comment other than to say that our thoughts and prayers will continue to be focused on, on our athletes, on our staff, um, on the families of our staff um, who uh, have been, um, who have uh, had, a, had to go through one of the most terrible ordeals we can ever imagine. Thank you. Thank you, Zimmer, Humble Journal. Young, um, when it comes to sports for teachers, are there additional supports being offered um, compared to what's being offered for students, or can both students and teachers access those resources? Very good. 
question, Becky. Absolutely, it's it's those resources are available for our staff. One of the things that is part of the TURT, TURT response that uh, both Greg and I are involved in, and TURT is Tragic Events Response Team. Um, part of that, of course, is bringing in staff who can step into classrooms and take a, over for other teachers so that they can go and get the supports that they need. And so all those types of things are in place. We've got a very um, structured process that way to be able to support the needs of our staff. As I said before, the, meeting the needs of our staff is really crucial. Um, they're with our children right now. And so in order to be able to support our our, our students, we really need to make sure that our staff are supported. Do you have an additional number on the amount of counselors that are being provided to Yes, I actually have. Uh, I just will give you uh, an update on that, that uh, we have approximately, we have over 50 counselors in place, um, and we have over 90 staff from both Greater Saskatoon and Horizon who, and, and other members from the ministry and, and other school divisions who are here to support the needs of our, our staff and students. Um, Chris Rashford again. Um, can one of you briefly tell me how it came to be that um, the two boards uh, run the same school? It's kind of cool. Uh, I've never heard of it before. I believe that would take a pretty long history lesson as, uh, <laughs> as that's been, uh, that has been the case here in Humboldt for Many, many decades, uh, yes, yeah. Uh, so uh, the original Humboldt Collegiate Institute um, resided in a different portion of the city. Uh, it was um, uh, you know, co-managed and, and this is the new facility that was built, uh, I'm trying to remember how many years ago now, not very long. Uh, and it's just been the, the wish of the community that uh, the, this uh, continue and so, and so it has. It is unique in Saskatchewan, absolutely it is. Entirely possible. So the, that is a humble Broncos matter, of course, and, and, uh, but at the same time, what I would say, because I hear this um, from our, our youth and from our um, parents and, and that sort of thing across our city, recognizing that there are supports in place, um, not only within this community, but that people are reaching out. Greg had mentioned the, the Premier speaking to us and having conversation and, and the Prime Minister making phone calls and those kinds of things and being at at uh, a vigil the other night the 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 idea is that we recognize that the whole of our country is wrapping its arms around Humboldt and I think that in an, in and of itself is critical for our our students and our parents and our community members so that that outpouring of support has been vital in terms of beginning the processes um, albeit very slow toward healing so, thank you. Kevin, I am Marty Klinkenberg from the Logan Mail. Um, I'm sure you've had a strategy like for an event in place uh, for a long time, but due to the scope of the matter, you know, what's the difference between the plan you had in place and then having to enact something for kind of a catastrophic event like this? You know, it's, I, I would go back to conversations um, when we finally could come to grips with what actually um, had happened. Um, conversations that uh, we've had with, with the Canadian and probably international expert on this, this is, in, in his words, unprecedented. And so things change. Um, we, need to, we need to be prepared to shift our direction and, and where we think we need to go based on what the needs look like. Um, Greg said it so eloquently when he talked about our children and that we have very young children and very, um, you know, or no, very old children, or, and, and then high school children. 
And the whole idea is that that wide range requires us to look at things differently. And we might have had an idea that this is how we can support, but every child is going to have a different need that way. Every child, as Greg mentioned, um, it, it has a, a different um, paradigm relative to their experience with, with the, the, the people who have been impacted or, and were part of the, the uh, terrible tragedy that occurred on Friday evening. So I think in that way, um, we recognized we needed to be prepared to manage our, thing, our, our direction um, with uh, a clear understanding that we would have to shift as, as we understood things differently. So. Uh, any further questions? Uh, hearing none, I'll thank you for uh, being here today. Um, I would also reiterate that uh, we're asking that you respect the privacy of the students, staff, and families in their time of grief. Thank you. Sorry, totally.